Hello everyone, Ian here at Able Cine in Burbank and today we're checking out the sound devices or the video devices PIX E5 monitor and I've put it onto my Movi M5 just to show one of the many features built into this. You know, the folks at Sound Devices like to say that this is a really great monitor that just happens to record. I think that's kind of a modest statement for this thing because it does pack a tremendous feature set and a great monitor and the recording is quite impressive too. But before we get into the menus and the features, I just wanted to show you that uh, one of the great things about this is here I am in a standard Movi configuration, but what if I want to invert it so that my lens is at the eye line of someone that I'm following or tracking with? Well, I take my Movi, I'm going to invert it, there it goes, and the image on my Pix flips with it automatically. So I don't have to go into menus, it automatically orients and I'm ready to go. You can see from this, the screen is set up to show as much or as little information as we wish to see while we're working. On the top left-hand corner, you can see our time code. Next to that is two channels of audio. And then just next to that, you can see the file name and the type of file. So we're recording ProRes files or .mov files. And just below it, the input is designated as HDMI. And it's a UHD signal at 2398 as being recorded in 8-bit. This is really nice to have that confidence to know exactly what and how we're recording our images. On the bottom here, you'll notice that the display is highlighted. As this is active, we're ready to start making some choices. But notice every command in white is associated with a push button below it. If I push the display key, you'll notice that half my information disappears. Push again, now we get a completely clean screen. I'll bring everything back. Now we have false color, zebras, and then in our four-way mode, picture, histogram, waveform, vector scope. If I want to see those uh, displays discreetly, I can, for instance, go into the waveform here, and here I have my overlay. If I push in again, it gives me the option to go in and choose what type of uh, waveform I'm looking at. So, for instance, I can now go in and I can choose a RGB parade. A vector scope. The vector is showing me the amount of color saturation in this uh, picture. And the histogram, another way of judging our exposure. I'm feeding a log signal into this right now, and if I want, I can now call up a LUT and there are LUTs built into this uh, monitor recorder. So you just simply scroll through, find the one that's appropriate, and then uh, activate it. If I want to bring my own cube files in, I can do that through an SD card. Next, I have a zoom. Now notice that it's in four times. I can make it a two times. The way that this works is you simply tap on the screen and the amount of magnification that you've asked for is now applied to the picture. I mean, notice over here that you've got an outer box and an inner. And what this is doing is it's showing me that I can track across, find focus in a particular area, concentrate on that, and just see where it is in respect to the entire frame. And then another push out takes you back into your full frame. We have other exposure aids such as, uh, or focusing rather, uh, such as peaking. And we can also call up a marker. If I push in on that button, it now gives me a whole host of different aspect ratios to choose from. And in addition, we can also change its color and we can apply a mask to the areas outside of picture. We can actually control the amount of opacity that we apply to the area outside of the aspect ratio markings. If you've used the PIX recorders in the past, the internal menu structure is going to be very familiar. But before I touch on that, I want to talk about the encoder knob here because it serves a dual purpose. If I push it in once, you notice that it goes into a four times zoom and it allows me to either navigate up and down. As you can see, these uh, white indicators are showing uh, the up and down movement. Or if I push in again, it now allows me to go left to right. To get out of this mode, I just give it a very intentional center tap and we're back into normal viewing position. I'm going to open up the menu 
and go into recording codecs and you'll notice that we have everything from an 8-bit 422 proxy up to 4x4 ProRes uh, XQ 12 bits. And at this size, it's very impressive. If I try to select a recording codec that's not compatible with my input, it will tell me that it is not compatible. The alternative or alternate over here to the menu is this alternate, which so far we've been looking at things that we use while we're shooting to evaluate focus, exposure, etc. If I press on the alternate key here, it puts me into uh, a file review and it also gives me uh, a playback mode. On the side you can see we have a mini jack for a headphone and next to it is a two channel line input. Uh, next to that SDI in and out, your HDMI in and out as well. There's an alternative for audio because this is a video devices. Uh, it's part of sound devices so they make a module that will attach to these and give you more audio uh, input options. Here on the back of the unit you can see that it can be powered by two Sony L batteries and in the center is the speed drive. The socket that the drive goes into is USB 3. This is an MSATA drive in a custom enclosure. The nice thing about this is once you've finished recording, you can pull that drive off. Because it's USB 3, it will plug right into your computer and you can start offloading your files. That concludes my look at the Video Devices PIX E5. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.